at the peak end of a bull market, you'll notice that P ratios tend to be astronomically high, and you'll notice that P ratios start to become referred to less and less, and investors will prefer to use revenue growth and price to sales ratios and price to revenue ratios instead of price to earnings ratios as indications of fair pricing. And they'll do this because the PE ratios are so astronomically high they're no longer justifiable. So when you're in the peak end of a bull market, what you'll see typically is um, the price to earnings ratios are astronomically high. They're no longer even really referred to and people will start referring to price to sales ratios, price to revenue and so forth rather than price to earnings. When investors, those, those investors who have invested at that time and lose a substantial amount of money in the following downfall, uh, one thing that you can look for to notice that you're now really into a, a serious bear market is the fact that a lot of people become dividend investors, quote unquote. Dividend investing is not the worst strategy you can employ, but for the most part, it's nonsensical, at least to me. It, it, it does not live up to the expectations, I think, that the people have for it. So oftentimes when people become dividend investors, quote unquote, they do so because of the passive income that dividends provide, allegedly. But there's a serious problem with this. Dividends yield about a good dividend yield, a fantastic dividend yield, would be somewhere like 4% per year, okay? The vast majority of people, excess of 95% of people, do not have more than $100,000 in their portfolios, okay? If they have $50,000, that would probably be fantastic, okay? So the vast majority of people do not have even $100,000 in their portfolio. So let's say they become passive dividend investors for passive income, quote unquote, and they have $100,000, which probably 99% of people do not have, okay? They have $100,000 in their portfolio. What is that yielding on a yearly basis? $4,000, okay? That is not a significant amount of money to make any substantial change to their lifestyle whatsoever. So whatever passive income this form of investing purports to yield, in reality, it's completely insignificant. If $4,000 of dividends is going to make a substantial difference in a person's life, they have another problem which they need to be addressing before they even get into investing, which is their income. Once that income problem is solved, then there are substantially superior ways to invest in your money than investing based off of dividend yields and payout ratios. Okay, and dividend stability. It, it, it really is nonsensical because if you needed the passive income, then you shouldn't be focusing on dividends. There are superior methods of acquiring passive income or income in general. But then if you have the money to invest, why would you invest it in a suboptimal method? So really, it, it's not appropriate for basically anybody. Because even, even if, let's say, you had, uh, uh, let's say, something like, you know, a, a million dollars to invest now, right? You have a million dollars in your portfolio. So if you have a 4% dividend yield, it's, it's, it's yielding you, let's say, something like $40,000 per year. Okay, we can argue that that's more livable, right? But there are still superior ways to invest that money where you could be doubling that money every three to four years if you were a knowledgeable investor knowledgeable in, in, in true value investing, the true strategies. So I think that people are shortchanging themselves by simply using this dividend style of investing. If you really need passive income to live off of, chances are you don't have enough capital to make any significant difference anyways through dividends. So you might as well try to accomplish something substantial through capital appreciation, through investing your money properly. You see what I'm saying? Like if you only have 20000 or $10,000 to invest, 
you know, you're getting a $400 worth of dividends per year. That is completely insignificant. Even if we, you reinvest that money and start to compound it, you know, you're not going to, it's, it's of no significance till after like 20, 30 years down the road. So if you're planning on saving for retirement, there are still superior ways to invest. So why would you do it? It, it makes no sense to me. You know, if you're poor, let's say, right? You don't have enough money for the dividends to be of any significance anyways, so what's the point of doing it, right? You know, only if the only circumstance in which I could see dividends being like, you know, of, of uh, any sort of realistic way of living, right, is if you had a $2 million portfolio and were investing in companies with high dividend yields, like 4% or higher, Okay, and then, you know, based off of that, you would have like $80,000 a year in passive income. Okay, but how, what percentage of people have a $2 million portfolio, right? The vast majority of people who are investing in dividend style investing are doing it for the passive income because they don't make enough money, but they don't have enough capital for that passive income to be of any significance to them for at least... 30 years because of the slow effect of compounding of those high dividend yielding stocks. Because those companies with those high dividend yields are not growing very fast. Okay, If they pay a 4% dividend yield and are growing at 5% per year, right? You know, we're not looking at substantial growth. So if, if, if you don't have a lot of money, you should be focusing on growing your income. And then once you are making more money, right? Why would you then invest it in an inferior method when there are superior ways to be growing your money where you could be doubling it every three to four years instead of every seven to eight years through high dividend yielding stocks, right? The only circumstance, like I say, where it makes sense for somebody to be a dividend investor, dividend investor, is if they already have millions of dollars and just want to live on a middle class salary of $80,000 a year. But if you need to grow your money, it's not the way to do it. It's not the way you are going to wind up with significantly less capital after 30 or 40 years. Like we're talking, you're going to wind up with like 30 times less money than somebody who knows what they're doing in investing, right? Dividend investing is not the way to go unless you have probably at least three or four million dollars in your portfolio and you just want to live passively. But then even if you just wanted to live passively, I mean, wouldn't it make more sense to put your money in, in compounders, serious compounders, like, you know, uh, like what we call, you know, grow stocks at a, at a good price that are able to compound significantly and just take out some money, you know, when you need it? So it, it just, it, you know, it's sad to see because I see on Instagram all the time, oh, if you put $1,000 in Starbucks, you're going to get $2 a year. Like, what the fuck is that? Who gives a shit? Like, seriously, even if you put $100,000 and you get $2,000 a year, if that is enough to make a difference, you have a problem. Like, if $2,000 a year is going to make a difference, that's a problem, okay? That needs to be addressed through increasing your income, not through investing in a stock paying a 2% dividend yield or 3% dividend yield, okay? So dividends are good. I'm not saying they're not good, but investing in a stock for the dividend is basically like going to work for a company because you like the coffee in the cafeteria. It, it's, it, it is not, you know, it, it's not enough. It's not enough to justify an investment, okay? So keep that in mind. There are superior ways to invest. Being a dividend investor, to me, makes no sense. There are superior ways. Why, why would you do it? I don't get it. So I really don't get it. Um, like I say, the only circumstance in which it makes sense for people to invest specifically in high dividend yielding stocks is if they already have millions and millions of dollars and are just looking for the passive income. So that's my perspective on it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Be sure to like the video. Thanks.